Okay, hello people. In this video, we want to look at post uh, posterior blepharitis or meibomitis. Okay, uh, posterior blepharitis or meibomitis. So where are we? First of all, we have to take a check. We are in blepharitis. Uh, we are studying blepharitis. It is one of the inflammation of eyelid. Inflammation, uh, inflammatory disorders of eyelid, many other. This is blepharitis where the lid margin is affected, guys. And um, this could be a chronic condition. And remember, it's very common. So this is a subacute or chronic inflammation of lid margins. It's extremely common. And in that uh, bacteria, you can blame because of bacteria. You can blame because of some uh, seborrheic secretions of the disease gland and all that. So seborrheic um, or squamous blepharitis, which we have already finished. Then it can be a mixture of this bacteria and uh, seborrheic uh, things. And then you have uh, posterior blepharitis or meibomitis. Posterior blepharitis or meibomitis is what we are looking at in this video. Other than that, you have parasitic blepharitis where the parasite will be there. So it is called as infestation. Okay, so we are done with bacterial, we are done with seborrheic. Now we are moving on to posterior blepharitis or mitomitis. See, till now, whatever they told, no, that bacterial and seborrheic, they were telling it is more anterior. Okay, so what are we looking at? Mibomian. So, mibomitis actually, mibomitis, yeah. So, mibomitis means what? Inflammation of the mibomian gland or what? So, a mibomian gland dysfunction seen commonly in patients with <clears throat> acne, rosacea and seborrheic dermatitis. So, again they are mixing, right? Seborrheic is coming here, acne, rosacea. So, this is a mibomian gland dysfunction. So, where is mibomian gland? First, we have to look at that. So, if this is the eyelid, this is the upper eyelid, let's say. In that, they have marked here uh, in blue. Actually, in blue, they have marked here. That is the mibomian gland, right? This is a sebaceous gland, right? So, you have mibomian gland. Even in upper lower both you have this mibomian gland dysfunction happens when when the person has some eczema is it did they say eczema so, so no acne rosacea rose, rose, rosacea seborrheic dermatitis seborrheic dermatitis okay guys so what and all these people have acne so can we draw the face and show some acne acne rosacea seborrheic dermatitis is some skin issue Seborrheic and these people have some mibomian gland dysfunction. You can clearly see here the mibomian glands. Uh, these are the outlets, right? Some secretion kind of clogging and all is happening here. So there will be foam in tears. Mibomian seborrhea is a ca in, in mibomian seborrhea. There is foam in the tears. Wow. Let's see if we can find an image of. Not exactly. No, there is nothing like that. But you have to remember that there is foam in the tears in mibomitis form in the tears is a characteristic feature of this mibomitis. Guys, now let us look at, these are the important things, let us look at it in detail, uh, posterior blepharitis or mibomitis. So, in this there are two types guys, chronic and acute according to the textbook. So, mibomitis, inflammation of mibomian glands occurs chronic or acute forms. Chronic, so you have chronic and acute. So, they are explaining each. Let us see chronic. Chronic mibomitis is commonly occurring mibomian gland dysfunction. It is commonly uh, seen in middle-aged persons, especially those with acne rosacea or seborrheic dermatitis. Bacterial lipases are being blamed to play main role in the pathogenesis of, they are blaming what? Bacterial lipases. So, they are blaming this to be responsible. Okay. So, everywhere they will blame bacteria or something. Here again they are blaming bacteria or what? Symptoms, what will this person's symptoms be? Chronic irritation, burning, itching, grittiness, mild lacrimation with remissions and exacerbations. So, they will have irritation, burning, itching, gritting, mild lacrimation with remissions. This keeps occurring again and again. Symptoms are worse in the morning. Okay, let's write that down. That looks unique. Symptoms are worse in morning. Okay. And then, this is morning, yeah. Signs, what are the signs? When you look at this person, what do you see? White frothy foam-like secretions are frequently seen on the eyelid margins and canthi, mibomian, seborrhea. Something we have seen like this, right? Opening of mibomian glands become prominent with thick secretions which can be expressed out by pressure on the eyelids. See, we can see that right here. So, uh, when you press this, you will get some secretions, thick secretions like toothpaste. 
Meibomian gland orifices may also show capping with oil globules, pouting, recession or plugging. So the orifices of meibomian gland, these only right, they may show capping with oil globules, pouting, recession or plugging. Vertical yellowish streaks shining through the conjunctiva can be seen on aversion of the lid. So if you avert the eyelid, what can you see? Let us avert this eyelid and see under. Vertical yellowish streaks shining through the conjunctiva can be seen. Which conjunctiva they did not say? Palpebral or bulbar? They can see, be, can be seen on aversion of the lids. These represent the mybobian ducts filled with thick secretion. Okay, that makes sense. So, that will be on the palpebral conjunctiva. They can see yellow streaks. That will be the mybobian ducts which are filled with thick secretion. So, when you look under. Hyperemia and telangiectasia of posterior lid margin around the orifices of meibomian gland can be seen frequently. Okay, let us make it red a little then. Hyperemia around all this. Okay, hyperemia. Okay, oily and foamy tear film with accumulation of froth on the lid margins or inner canthus. Yes, we already already inner canthus will be on this side, right? If we are assuming this is the right eye. So here they are saying in the inner canthus you will have foamy. Tear film oily. Secondary changes in the form of papillary conjunctivitis. Secondary changes, what will be there? Papillary conjunctivitis, inferior corneal punctate, epithelial erosions may be seen. So, if this is the eye, right? In the cornea inferior, there will be punctate epithelial erosions. Then there will be papillary conjunctivitis. So, if you look at the conjunctiva, papillary conjunctivitis, all this will be there. So, we are done with chronic. Chronic conjunctivitis we are done with. Now let us look at acute. How is acute different? Acute mybomitis occurs due to staphylococcal infection. So again they are blaming bacteria. It is characterized by painful swelling around the involved gland. So in this they are talking about pain. In the other one they were only talking about irritation or something. Here they are talking about pain in the acute one. It is characterized by painful swelling around the involved gland. Pressure on it results in expression of pus. So here there will be pus. Okay, followed by serosanguineous discharge. Zero sang zero sanguineous discharge. Okay. So first pus will come, then that zero sanguineous discharge will come. Okay, how do you treat mybomitis? Let's look at the treatment now. So treatment they are saying, let's write it here. Treatment. Lid hygiene. Everywhere, same thing. Lid hygiene. I E N E lid hygiene uh, at least once a day you should warm compress expression of accumulated secretions repeated vertical massage like milking you should do of these glands then uh, topical antibiotics in the form of eye ointment should be rubbed at the lid margin so as you should give antibiotics these are topical eye drops may be used three to four times a day systemic tetracyclines doxycycline 100 mg something remain mainstay of the posterior blepharitis okay systemic tetracycline so and topical antibiotic systemic also they are giving are they saying that that systemic is mainstay of treatment systemic tetracyclines like doxycycline remain the mainstay of treatment for posterior blepharitis because of their ability to block staphylococcal lipase production okay so please go back here and Make this bold, okay? It is systemic tetracycline like doxycycline, which is the most important thing they are mentioning. This is the one that has the capacity, the systemic tetracycline has the capacity to block the staphylococcus lipase production itself, it can stop. Okay, ocular lubricants as usual, artificial tears and what are the other things? Uh, topical steroids, weak such, uh, they may be required in people who have papillary conjunctivitis, okay? So, this is for what? Papillary conjunctivitis conjunctivitis right for that so papillary conjunctivitis is a bad thing they are giving topical steroids which are weak for papillary conjunctivitis main treatment in mybomitis is what systemic tetracyclines like doxycycline guys uh, now let us look at mybomitis uh, quickly what is it it is posterior okay so that is why you are giving systemic treatment in this you have chronic acute <clears throat> then uh, remember here foam 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 discharge okay foam uh, in the tears and foam sitting in the medial canthus etc. That is all about posterior blepharitis or mybomitis. In the next, we will have to look at the parasitic blepharitis or lash infestation. Okay. What did we look at in this? Posterior mybomitis blepharitis. Okay.